Uh, hey guys, Todd Bettenhausen here, uh, again I'm with another one of my sim racing videos. This one is uh, going to be about your monitor setup in your sim racing cockpit. And um, some pretty important principles here that apply to all driving simulators in general, but we're going to talk about iRacing specifically because it has some uh, really strong multi-monitor support. Uh, the first thing to understand here when you're looking through your monitors, it's just like having a window, or in this case windows in front of you, that you're viewing the driving environment through. Uh, if I were actually sitting in this race car, Twin Ring Motegi, everything would be in its place, both inside the car and out in the driving environment. And what you want to do is set up your simulator so that what you see while you're driving is exactly what you would see to as much of an extent as possible if you were actually in the race car. It would be just like me taking all the guts out of these three monitors and bringing them inside this Chevy Corvette with me and setting them up in the same place relative to my, my head, my helmet, as they are right here and looking through them without any guts in them. So just like walking up to a window at home or in a building, the closer you walk to that window, the more you're going to see through it. Um, as you walk up to that window, distant objects aren't going to change much because you're not going to get much closer to them, relatively speaking. But the closer you walk up to that window, the more you're going to see through it. And that's why it's important to get your monitor or monitors as close as you can physically stand them. Now I can't show the steering wheel here because I'm under NDA, but this is uh, new Fnatic equipment that I'm testing and it's under embargo right now. But I do want you to notice how close the center monitor is to the steering wheel. I've seen some really high-end cockpits that were set up for single screens where the screen was much, much too far away to get a good driving experience. It's like driving through a pinhole or driving through a telescope. Um, you just can't see much through a small window when you're a long ways away from it. So what people with, that are in that situation have to do is they have to set an abnormally large field of view. And then it's like driving through a fisheye lens. Things aren't where they would be in the real world. As you approach a corner, the apex of the corner is going to be in here somewhere instead of over here. Now I've got a replay loaded up here and we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and roll that at the end of the video here just to show what it's like because I'm going to take the camera from Kerry. I've got my brother Kerry assisting me here. I'm going to take the camera from him and I'm going to put it where my head is and attempt to show a driver's eye perspective of what it's like to have a setup like this where all three screens wrap around your head. Now if you, uh, if you move off to my left, Kerry, you can see the way I've got this set up. The outer edge of these screens is just about in line with my eyeballs. And that's 180 degrees field of view. That's half a circle. 360 degrees would be all the way around me. Straight across from my eyeballs is 180 degrees. iRacing supports a maximum of 179 degrees and here's our graphics setting pages for iRacing or a setting page. And you can see that iRacing sees the combined resolution of all three monitors. Watch your minimum focusing distance there. It's rendering all three screens separately and then over here you enter your, your dimensions on your monitors. The width including bezels, the width of the viewable area, you have your angle between your center and your side monitors, and of course your viewing distance, because again, the closer you are to the window, the bigger it looks and the more you see through it. And entering all those things in, you arrive at a field of view, which is accurate. Now, um, I'm a real purist about this stuff. I think there's only one correct setting, and that is the setting that puts everything in the driving environment at the true size and true position it would be in if you were in that race car. And as I sit here in this Corvette, it's obvious that I'm in a left-hand steer car. I'm over here against the door. I see the driver's side mirror here. I see the regular rearview mirror in the car. Here's the center console portion of the dash, a safety net. And then way over here, blocked out, is the other mirror. Now, I could, uh, I could do a few things. iRacing has a setting where you can raise and lower yourself up in the car to a small extent. And... If you look closely from behind, Carrie, you'll see that I'm sitting a little bit too high relative to these monitors. I'm about two inches too high. And the reason is I'm in the middle of making changes to my cockpit here, and my seat's going to be lowered. So I'm, that's kind of a forward-looking thing. I know that what I'm doing isn't quite accurate, and as objects transition from one monitor to another, lines may not appear to be quite straight. And incidentally, that's why you have to enter the two widths for your monitors, one including the bezels and one of the viewable area, because you can see here that iRacing actually leaves out. It doesn't render what would fall behind the bezels. You can see how this bar on the windshield lines up. Everything lines up 
just right. Uh, this car has a rather large A pillar, and that junction of those two bezels falls right in that in that A pillar. And when you've got a triple monitor set up like this, it uh, you know, you don't even notice uh, honestly these bezels once the car is in motion. Now let's talk about the angle here quickly between the center and the side monitors that you enter. What you really want to do is you want to have the side monitors perpendicular to your eye line or your eye point when you look to either side. <clears throat> and being in this thing is just like being in a real car. I can't take it all in without turning my head and moving my eyes, but you can see how I'm looking almost straight onto the side monitors. And again, if we draw a line from the outer edge of this monitor's viewable area straight across my face to the outer edge of my right hand monitor's viewable area, my eyeballs are almost right in that plane. And that gets you to 179 degrees. It's possible to set up monitor arrays and eye racing uh, using these multi GPUs like we have here uh, an AMD 7970. It's got three monitors connected directly via display port. Uh, you can set up up to five by one display groups. It's a lot easier to get five monitors to wrap around your head, but you need to be careful about the combined aspect ratio of what you're doing here. Um, this one here is 5760 by 1080, and I can see a fair amount of the inside of the car. Um, my steering wheel is just about exactly in line with the graphical steering wheel. You can see the, the gloved hand there on the wheel. From my point of view, I can just barely see the the in-car steering wheel. So I can see most of the gauges in most of the cars. What would be really ideal would be to have three 4 to 3 monitors, large enough to get this full 179 or 180 degree wraparound effect, and then you would see even more of the inside of the car above and below. And that's the reason these 5x1 uh, display groups don't make a whole lot of sense to me. You're just looking through a narrower slit from top to bottom, but you can only get out to 179 degrees, so you need to be careful about, about the combined aspect ratio of whatever you set up. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll this replay. This is Kerry driving in the, in the Chevy Corvette in iRacing, and I'm going to take the camera from him, and we're going to turn the room lights off and we're going to show what it's like to actually view these three screens from the driver's eye perspective. You can't really appreciate standing behind watching someone sim race in a rig like this what the driver is actually seeing from the driving position. That's very important because again the, the goal here is that everything is in the exact same size and location as it would be if you were actually driving. And when you set this up right it has a striking effect um, being able to look to the apex of corners in a natural manner, seeing cars that are right next to you actually where they belong, right next to you, instead of going through all this mental math of looking at a, a smaller display out front. And let me add one thing. I know not everybody can have a, a three-screen setup like this. A lot of people have to have one screen, and of course with one screen, bigger is better and closer is better. But most single-screen setups of, of typical PC monitors, you know, 23 inches and smaller, even if you've got that monitor right behind the steering wheel, you're probably going to have to operate at 45 degrees or even less of a field of view. If you use your field of view calculator, you'll find out that 45 degrees is the minimum field of view that iRacing supports, and that may not even be enough. But most people have to compromise. They have to go out to into the 60s or 70s on their field of view in order to see enough around their car to, to have good situational awareness. So, you know, not every setup can be perfect, but... You know, certainly the holy grail is to, to have something like this where everything is exactly in its place. So I'm going to lean up here and roll this replay. My play button's hidden by my steering wheel. And I'm going to take the camera from Kerry, and he's going to get the room lights. And here we are coming to the main straight at Twin Ring Motegi. Um, my video camera here doesn't have really wide of enough of a field of view. I can only see about one screen at a time, but you can see as I look around inside the car that I'm quite close to the left hand door. You can see the driver's side mirror where it belongs. There's the car next to me right where he belongs, nice Ford GT. Looking around the apex of the corner, all the way around everything's right where it belongs. We've got our rear view mirror here, somebody hot on our tail. And it's a very immersive experience. Everything is exactly where it would be if I was really in the car, at the exact size that I would see it. And I consider this 
a, a properly set up three monitor rig to be the most important upgrade you can make in your sim racing. And if you shop carefully, you can get a graphics card that, that will support three screens and three monitors for probably much less money than you'd imagine. I'd certainly do this before I did a set of high-end controls even, or high-end pedals, because this will transform your sim racing. Even if you have to turn the eye candy down, you know, no shadows, uh, no higher details, you know, I'd rather drive on a, a bare ribbon of asphalt with minimum detail than I would to have all the eye candy on if that meant the difference between one, three, one screen and three. So I, I hope this gives everyone a, a good idea just how how doggone neat it can be to have this stuff set up just right. Yeah, my rig's very modest in terms of hardware. I do have a, a 5870 GPU, uh, an older uh, AMD GPU, and uh, three very inexpensive 23-inch monitors, uh, e-machines. I think I've got maybe just a shade over $100 each in those three monitors. And the Brand new. Yeah, yeah, the experience is still uh, pretty amazing. So you don't really have to go out and spend a lot. It's just important to get three monitors and even a modest GPU that will support them. Right, and, and these monitors aren't even expensive monitors. These are Asus VE258Qs. They're 25-inch. They have DisplayPort input. Uh, it can be important to have all three inputs the same or to, to as much of an extent as possible because that allows you to get away from some nasty things like timing issues and tearing. And I'm going to be doing a video in the near future about tuning out tearing. Uh, how to tune it out and get a better visual experience. We're not running V-Sync here and you don't see any tearing because I've chosen a frame rate that's that's just ideal for for making the tears very inconspicuous. But these monitors are Asus VE258Qs. I got them for $200 a piece on Black Friday. They're 25 inch display port in. They are TN monitors but they have two millisecond response at least stated and they perform very very well for iRacing. Now I do have a an expensive GPU and Asus uh, Direct CU2 7970. Um, the 7970 and also the NVIDIA 680 are both capable of running multi-monitor configurations when connected to one card only. Uh, some people have gotten multi-GPU configurations to run well in iRacing, but most people uh, you know, have had better success with, with single GPU solutions. And one thing to add quickly about that, um, it's very important in iRacing to have a good CPU. Because iRacing is CPU bound. Your minimum frame rates are generally going to be determined by the clock speed of your CPU. And I've got a i5-2550K overclocked here to 4.5 gigahertz on air with a simple, a simple cooler. Uh, Kerry can give us a look at it there. And uh, I'm just going to let this replay roll. I don't know what he did after that, uh, after that on track session. But it is important to, uh, to get that CPU frequency as high as possible to maintain higher frame rates. And it, when you set a frame rate that will minimize your tearing, you want to find the best frame rate that your system can hold all the time. This one is set at 87 frames per second. So we'll get into some of those other performance aspects, especially how to get rid of tearing, because once you see it, you can't stop seeing it. And I used to insist that I never saw it, and, and I know better now. So hopefully I can do a, a nice little tutorial about, about doing some actual performance tuning. But it all starts with getting your, your setup right so that what you see is as accurate as possible out, outside the cockpit and inside. So that's about it for now. Um, thanks for watching. Looking forward to doing the next one already. Uh, we're doing video reviews on this new Fanatic gear. Uh, those will be released when the embargo ends, which would be, I think, uh, June 29th, 2012. And then these performance videos, I'll go ahead and put this one up tonight, and then I'll do one in the very near future about tuning out tearing. So. Uh, that's, that's it for now. Again, this is Todd Bettenhausen. This is iRacing.com. And uh, good racing, everybody. See you next time.